frost have killed the vine. In the cluttered back room of a DC coffee shop, mismatched furniture is pushed in wood to upholstery, brick to cast iron. The room is dusty, a crummy Persian rug below, the sounds of bluegrass. Dolly Parton loves us, and then another voice, unzipping memories, peeling off scarves and jacket. Three windows, frames painted black. Mississippi John Hart finds me, full of winter sunshine, my chest, and tears stream my wind-chapped cheeks. I'm a little girl, this is where I lived, somewhere inside the guitar, the blues man's lips, the warped wood's warmth, harmonies, stacks, the needles stuck, the tears of a child come home. <laughs> Dad always brought someone or something home. A fast driver with an eye for things on the side of the road like the Stetson I had him cremated in. He wore that hat for 30-something years. We found it on the side of the freeway, brandy new, brown felt. His mistake was who he chose to save. Like John Blaze, the horse who broke the fence and ran away. Miles down the road, he ate all the bird seed seed from Dot Leisure's feeder. She called the game warden and the state police. Her polyester mouth booed to the phone, her ugly house aqua blue against pastoral green, the tacky plastic Santa and reindeer never put away before Easter. Took hours fading into the dark dots of dust for Dad to lasso that wild ass horse and ride him home. One of his strays, a small brown duck, the other ducks raped and pecked at brutally. Painted pond turtles he scooped up before they were flattened into dirt road. Bear the dog ran at least 60 miles over mountains and streams back to the family we got him from. Years later, he was found in the woods, a bullet in his furry side. My mom left soon as we moved in, stayed long enough to clear a road up there, cut a view across state to Blue Mountains, seen from a kitchen where she cooked breakfast on the wood stove. She left the remnants of scrambled eggs on the ceiling, was gone before the first snow. The girlfriend he married, divorced, and carried on with for 20 years, a rescue. He picked her out of a tar paper shack with two dirty-nosed kids and multiple personalities, <laughs> though I never saw even one. Life on that hill left all of us ready to run. You can't stay, said the nurse in green scrubs, her shoulders hunched, her face scrunched, braced for trouble. Visiting hours were over hours ago. The woman held the baby tight to her chest, waited for the night nurse to leave. You can't stay, the nurse repeated. You've been here all day. We're not leaving, said the man. I'll call the doctor if you're going to be troubled, said the nurse. We left the first night, the man said. When we called in the morning, we could hear him screaming over the phone. We're not leaving. It was past midnight. The night nurse wasn't going to waste any more of her time. The doctor would deal with this in the morning. Every four hours, the nurse took the baby's vitals. Once, she woke him to change his bandages, which had soaked through. Gently, she painted his injuries with yellow methionide solution and the thick white sulfur disolonized ointment. The baby screamed, but not as he had when he was alone. The nurse said nothing but the set of her jaw. Her overall stiffness told the couple the issue had not been resolved. In the morning, the doctor came with a ward nurse and told the couple the hospital regulations prohibited them from remaining in the burn unit. If you make us leave, the baby goes with us, the man said. I could call Child Protective Services, the doctor said. You can't take the baby out of the hospital. He won't survive. And don't make us leave, the man said. They glared at each other. After a few moments of silence, the doctor and the nurse exchanged a look, got up and left the room. A few minutes later, the doctor returned alone. You could stay, but only if you obey the staff and don't cause any more trouble, he said. When the doctor left, the father began sending the soft look to his son. Irish little baby, don't you cry. They say if you're here on earth,
earth you may have ever tears Serves them right, says Uncle Beals above <laughs> Mother put you through school And you've worked hard at bringing crew Got yourself a comfy job for Uncle Beals above Suffering that never ends. We're all here just working for Beals above. Secretary has red nails and a long, cold, fiery tail. Working, working for Beals above. They say if you're here, 